Um, after that, the medical treatment that we would look at includes uh, things like the oral contraceptive. And I know that people are sometimes concerned about using the oral contraceptive long term. But again, we have to remember that this is an imbalance in hormones that is causing this condition to present in a certain way. And what we're doing by using the pill is we're trying to correct that abnormal hormonal balance. So we are just giving the body the kind of correct levels of estrogen and progesterone that are needed uh, throughout the month. So we're not relying on our own ovaries to produce those hormones. So we're not, we're not adding any uh, sort of additional hormones to, to our bodies. It's, it's just kind of replacing everything at the correct level that, it, that it's supposed to be. And this helps to reduce these symptoms that we see. And it often takes up to about six months for us to see a change, certainly in hair growth. If there isn't a change in, in the abnormal hair growth, sometimes we do consider adding pills called antiandrogens. So it's an additional pill um, that reduces those high testosterone levels in order to reduce the, the abnormal hair growth. Okay. People often worry about the long-term effect on fertility of the oral contraceptive. So there is no real evidence to say that it affects fertility long-term. It is, um, unfortunately, I guess, one of those things that would just mask something that's underlying. So we know PCOS itself affects fertility, which I will get to as well. And when a person's on the pill, your cycles will now be regular. So it seems that everything is under control. And once you stop that pill again, things kind of go back to the way that they were because there's this underlying issue. So just to say, it's not the pill necessarily that's causing difficulty with fertility long term. It's the underlying condition. Okay, and that's usually, usually the case.